I always encountered anti-Semitism way before Hitler. I encountered anti-Semitism when I went to school with a six-year-old. After school, everybody else would chase us and try to, and try to beat us up. I remember telling my parents, why are we staying here? Why don't we leave Austria? Uh, I was radicalized at the age of six. <laughs> I, I, wanted, I wanted to get out of Austria. I remember the story. My parents, I guess, my, to protect me, painted a picture that we're leaving Vienna and we're going on vacation. Schenker was the only place in the entire world that had no requirements. You didn't need a visa, nothing. All you had to do is book passage. Every country in the world had restrictions of one kind or another. Every country, countries you wouldn't normally dream of going to, wouldn't let Jews in. So out of, out of desperation, actually, uh, people picked Shanghai. And I just remember ending up all of a sudden in Shanghai. I don't have good memories of it. I mean, I have memories, but they weren't wonderful. It was very, very dirty. It was much harder for the older generation. They really suffered. They came into a different culture, they didn't speak the language. Everything was different. We all lived in one room. So in that one room, my mother cooked there, and my father worked there, and we slept there. There really wasn't any real privacy at all. I didn't even know what privacy was. I remember always asking my mother, when are we going to leave? It was hard to find food. You always were concerned about when are we going to eat again. But food was the uh, main, main concern. Survival is the bottom line. The first time we really felt fear when they bombed the ghetto uh, by mistake. It was July 17th, I'll never forget the date. Ely was sketching and the sirens were on and my mother and everybody's yelling, hurry up, let's go down into the basement. And Ely wasn't budging, we sketched the planes flying in. The B-29s came over, we were trying to hit the Japanese radio station which was on the edge of the ghetto, instead of which they had the Chinese market at noon inside the ghetto, and it was horrible. It was really bodies lying all over. And that was the first time we really felt, well, maybe, maybe we're not going to make it. The JDC, the joint, uh, was the key part of of our life, of getting out of Shanghai. Their uh, effort was to get, to, get, to get us relocated out of Shanghai. And I don't know without the joints how it would have happened. I was personally helped by, by the joint through Charles Jordan, who was the head of the uh, joint in Shanghai. And he saw that I could draw. He was impressed with my whatever abilities I had. And he asked me, uh, would you like to study art in Paris? I think I could help you get there. Would you like to go to Paris? Would I like to go to Paris? I'll leave now. So he told me, I will be in Paris in two months. He was, became the head of the JDC in Europe, which was headquartered in, in Paris. And I will contact you. And then I got a letter from him in Paris. Before I do anything else, do you still want to come? I wrote one letter back, yes. <laughs> you internalize your experiences. And uh, I think the thing to have has built up confidence and hope that somehow you will uh, survive, somehow you will uh, achieve. I found a strength I never thought I had. The joint made it appear from a child's point of view that there was such a thing outside of Shanghai. There was hope.